Hello friends, I'm Tim Wildsmith, and in this video, I'm going to give you a few simple steps for how to read the Bible in a year, and not just read it, to make the most of it. I recently got an email from someone who said, hey, I've tried multiple times to read the Bible in a year, and I've never been successful. I've, I've given up halfway through, or I've given up at a certain point. I've never made it. What are your pointers? What are your tips? And so I started to respond, and I thought, you know what? This would make a great video. And not just how to be successful in like making it through, but how to really make it count, how to soak it in and have a meaningful experience reading the Bible. So in this video, I'm going to give you seven steps. Now, the first two are super practical. Like if you just want to watch the first two, I guarantee you, if you follow the first two steps, you will be successful in reading the Bible in a year. But then I'm going to give you five additional steps if you want to level it up and really make it count to make it a truly meaningful, life-changing experience. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Okay, first two steps. I promise you, if you follow these two steps, you will be successful. Number one, make a plan. Don't just dive into this one day and hope for the best. You need to make a plan, right? If you Google right now, one year Bible reading plan, you will be amazed by all of the options that are out there. And think about it. If you're going to spend a year reading the Bible, you might as well spend 15, 20, 30 minutes right now doing a little bit of research and coming up with a plan. The easiest one to follow is just reading the Bible straight through. Start in Genesis, read through Revelation. Now, I will be honest with you, when you get to like Leviticus and Numbers, those books get pretty dense. I know a lot of people whose read the Bible in a year plan has ended in Leviticus, right? So maybe you want to do a plan where you read a little bit of the Old Testament, a little bit of the New Testament. Maybe you read some Psalms and Proverbs every day to kind of mix it up. Maybe you go, I know that I can't read seven days a week because I have a busy schedule on this day or that day. So I'm going to come up with a five day a week reading plan or a six day a week reading plan. The point is, Find a plan and make that your guide for reading through the Bible in a year. That's step number one. Step number two is don't skip days. Yes, if you start to fall behind, you're going to be discouraged. So if you make a seven day a week, 365 day reading plan, but then there's actually one day a week where it's really hard for you to do it, it's going to be a struggle and you're going to find yourself wanting to give up because you get so far behind. Think about that. If you skip if, let's say you're trying to read three to three and a half chapters a day. If you miss two or three days in the first month, you're now suddenly nine or ten chapters behind schedule, and that can be overwhelming. So again, this is why I'm saying if you follow these two steps alone, you will be successful. If you make a plan and you don't skip any days, it stands to reason that you are going to be successful reading the Bible in the year because you're following the plan and you're not skipping any of the days that you plan for, then you will be successful. So again, if you're watching this video and you say, I just need to figure it out, find a plan, don't skip days, you will be successful. Now, I've got five more steps that will help you make this reading the Bible in a year experience really, really meaningful. Okay, steps three and four, you need to find something. Step three, find a Bible that's right for you. Yes, that's the tagline of my channel, but I'm convinced that if you find a Bible that you really love and enjoy reading, that you're going to want to spend more time reading the Bible. And that's what this year in the Bible is all about. I highly suggest that you do not try to read the Bible in a year using your phone or your laptop or your tablet. I think you should have a physical copy of the Bible. One is because you're just going to get notifications and text messages and emails coming through and it's going to be distracting. So put that in another room. Find a Bible that you really love. Start by choosing a translation. Which translation of the Bible do you want to read through in a year? Once you have that narrowed down, then you can see what's available. Most major translations have lots of options. Study Bibles, devotional Bibles, text Bibles, wide margin Bibles. Do you want to write notes? Do you need those wide margins? Do you need a giant print Bible? Because your eyesight's getting worse the older you get, like mine is, right? find a Bible that's right for you. Yes, consider what it looks like on the outside because when you walk by and see it sitting on the coffee table, you want to be like, man, I really love that Bible. I need to go spend time reading my Bible. Find a Bible that you love, that draws you in, that you're going to enjoy reading, and that will help you make the most of reading the Bible in a year. Step number four is something else you need to find. Find a place where you're going to read consistently. I want you to just choose a place that you're going to read every single day. Maybe it's in bed before you go to bed. I actually don't love the idea of doing your reading before you fall asleep because we all get really tired and we can't remember what we read that night. 
I choose the morning to go to my piano room. The piano room is in our house. My wife and I had a dining room with a table that we never really spent any time at. So we got rid of the table. We put a piano and a small couch in there and a coffee table, and that's my space. In the morning, there's great light. So I wake up in the morning, I make a cup of coffee, I go sit down with my Bible, and that's my place to read. And it's my place to focus. I love being in that room, and I've got a Bible that I love reading and spending time with. And it's just like it creates the right environment for consistently going back. And I'm convinced, again, that if you have a space that you're going to go to repeatedly, that you will build that rhythm. And eventually, probably pretty quickly, you're going to be like, oh, I can't wait to get up and read. I can't wait to go to that space and read that Bible. It's going to be something you love doing on a daily basis. It's going to help you make the most of reading the Bible in a year. So I've given you four steps. The first two were really practical. Make a plan. Don't skip days. The second two were finding a Bible that's right for you and finding a place where you're going to read and study on a daily basis. These last three things are how you can really level up reading the Bible in a year and make it a super meaningful, life-changing experience. Step five, engage with the text. What do I mean by that? I mean, jot down questions you have, highlight things that stand out to you. When you have questions, look up the answers. I did this a couple years ago. I used a red pen and anytime I didn't understand, I mean, listen, the Bible was written thousands of years ago. There are bound to be things that we don't get the first time around. So every time I had a question, I would circle it or I'd write it in the margins. And I had just a text Bible, a wide margin Bible where I had space to write. Then I would go grab a study Bible and I would look up the answers just to kind of think about this, right? You have one option of, I'm just going to read straight through the Bible in a year. I'm going to give myself 10 to 15 minutes a day. I'm going to be able to say that I did it. And that's totally fine. Over here, you go, you know what? I'm going to give myself 20 or 30 minutes a day and I'm really going to wrestle with the text. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to find out the answers. I'm here to tell you that if you do this version over here instead of this version, yes, this is reading the Bible in a year. This is letting the Bible change your life. That's what this is going to do is when you engage with the text in a really meaningful way. So that's step number five. Step number six kind of goes hand in hand with that. I want you to invite a friend along for the journey. Maybe it's a close friend. Maybe it's a family member, a spouse, a child, something like that. But I want you to call someone up and say, hey, I'm going to read the Bible in a year and I want you to do it with me. A, this is a good like level of accountability where you and someone else are doing it together. But B, it's really great to process what you're reading with someone else. Maybe you get together for coffee once a week or once a month and you say, here's all the questions I had about Genesis, or here's the things that stood out to me about Hebrews. I recently did that read through the year plan that I was talking about, and I shared it on my channel. Every book of the Bible, I would talk about what I learned and what questions I have. And many people hopped in the comments or sent me messages and said, it's so encouraging to hear you talk about your experience, the questions you had, the things that you learned along the way, because I was noticing some of those things, or I heard you say something and it made me realize that I had totally missed that. So the cool thing about doing this with someone else is that it can really make it a more meaningful experience for you, and you can have that level of community with someone else. So five is to engage with the text. Six is to invite someone along for the journey. And number seven is very simple. Don't forget to pray. Yes, this is about reading the Bible in a year, but I am convinced that you should also take that time that you're reading the Bible to really connect meaningfully with God. Use the time that you're reading to also carve out time to pray. Maybe it's before you start reading, you pray for those in your life, you offer some gratitude to God, and you ask God to really make help you make the most of the time that you're reading the Bible. Maybe it's after you read, you say, God, help me apply this to my life. Help me take the things that I'm reading and really change who I am to live it out and to let it flow into the world around me. You're going to have a life-changing experience if you engage with the text. You're going to have a life-changing experience if you invite someone else along for the journey. And I believe you're going to have a life-changing experience if you spend an entire year connecting with God in a meaningful way through prayer on a daily basis. So those are the three steps that I want you to add to the, the practical ones and the things you're going to find to really make it count and make this reading the Bible in a year experience particularly meaningful. So there you have it, seven steps for how to read the Bible in a year. I'm convinced that if you follow these steps, you will not only be successful in reading the Bible in a year, but it will be a truly meaningful experience for you. Leave me a comment if you have any thoughts or questions, and definitely share this video with your friends and loved ones if you think that they could use some help reading the Bible in a year as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.